Hi everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now today's soap is part of a collaboration and this collaboration was started by the amazing Bee from Sorcery Soaps. The collaboration is called World Peace, sort of a bit of a play on world peace but luckily for us, not every single soap had to have peas in it. So we are sort of following the theme of peace and being nice to each other and being friendly. That's kind of what the collaboration is all about. So what Bee's idea was is that each soap maker would make some small embeds in the shape of the world. And they would take these embeds and they would send them to another soap maker. Now that may be someone they know or maybe someone they've never communicated with. It was anyone who wanted to be part of the collaboration. Once you got your world, you then took those worlds that you'd received from another person and then you make a soap using those world embeds. Now, this collaboration was initially thought of way before, gosh it seems a long time ago doesn't it, way before the whole Covid-19 situation came about. And I must admit I had my design planned really quite early and I also had a soaping holiday planned where I was going to go to the US and visit a soapy friend of mine and she was going to make me some worlds and I was going to bring them home with me but obviously any travel plans and everything have all got scuppered haven't they? So eventually, just the other day, I managed to receive some worlds and I was very lucky. Um, fabulous Karen from Eden's Secret made me some gorgeous little worlds that you'll see in the video and I've used those in my soap. I'm going to link a link to her channel in the description below. I'm sure most of you know who Karen is, but if you haven't seen her channel, why don't you pop over and have a look. Now, as I said, these worlds arrived a couple of days ago and that meant that I would be making this soap on my birthday. Now, my birthday, I love my birthday. Um, I love birthdays, I think they're great and always really enjoy them. But my birthday for me is a good time, but also it's tinged with a little bit of sadness because on my birthday um, a few years ago, was the day that my mum died. The design that I'd made in my soaps was a design to have two doves with their olive branches flying up to the world. My mum always had doves. She loved doves, she had a dovecot in her garden and when I was growing up we were always surrounded by doves and obviously as I moved away from home and we'd go back and see them we would always see all the doves. So the fact that I was making this soap on my birthday um, and as I said the same day as my mum passed and I was doing a design with doves it's as I said <laughs> gosh you can see me now um, it, it's kind of like the first soap that's actually ever really made me cry a bit. Goodness me come on <laughs> let's go and make some soap. So the first thing that I did was to make the worlds that I was sending to the other sopa. And I literally just grabbed some blue and some white soap dough and I was trying to just mix them together but I didn't want them to mix fully because what I wanted to have was, you know the impression like when you see a picture of the earth from above and you can sort of see the clouds going over the sea. So I wanted that sort of white and blue type feeling. So I wanted to make sure that these worlds would fit nicely on a bar of soap. So therefore I just kept grabbing little bits of the soap dough that I'd rolled up and rolling them into tester balls. And once I was happy with the size that I'd got, I then weighed those and then I knew how much soap dough to use in each of the other balls. Then to make the areas of land, I mixed some brown and green soap dough together, again leaving it fairly mottled and I rolled it out thinly between two sheets of cling wrap so it didn't stick. 
And then all I've done is I've just scored across it so I can keep sort of a rough idea on the size of my pieces of land. And then I've just cut out random little bits of soap dough, roughly representing bits of land. And I've just gently applied them to the outside of the soap dough balls. I haven't bothered with any water or anything at this stage because this soap dough is freshly rolled. So it's still reasonably sticky and adhesive. I then just gently went round each of the little worlds and um, smoothed on the land pieces. And then finally I just went round them with a little metal tool to just really flatten down the sides of those little pieces so that they wouldn't peel off or anything. And then once they were all complete, I carefully packaged them up and sent them off to Elizabeth from Miss Crafty Soap. Obviously, she made a soap with them and I'm going to leave a link to her video in the description below so you can go and have a look at that afterwards. First of all, just before I start, I get a lot of questions about the extruder that I use. Mine is a Fimo Professional Extruder. I really do like this extruder, I think it's great. It takes a larger size disc than the Makins and a lot of the ones that you get on Amazon and it's made really, really well. So if you are looking for one, this would be the extruder that I would advise. So I'm just going to take a little bit of green soap dough. Now this is just a blended colour that I make myself from the colours that I'm allowed in my assessment. So I can't give you a link or a name for it at all. And then let's just talk about the quality of your soap dough. If you're trying to extrude something, especially if it's got a reasonable amount of detail to it, you need to have a good quality soap dough. So that soap dough should roll out nicely. It shouldn't leave your hands all dirty and sticky. If it does, it's too wet. And certainly it shouldn't crumble or crack. Mine almost has sort of like a waxy consistency to it. But as you can see here, it's rolling out nicely and it's very clean to use. I've printed out some extruder discs and now this is typically what I'll do with all of my extruders that I make to put in the shop is uh, I'll have a design that I want and then I'll print out a few versions of them and I'll test them. Ideally the thinner more delicate ones would be the ones that I would like but I know that those are not necessarily going to be the ones that will extrude so well. So therefore as you can see here I'm just going to test both of the sizes, see what happens when I extrude them and pick the one that gives the best effect. I'll also bear in mind that people may be using them with some soap dough that isn't completely um, excellent quality so obviously we just need to bear that in mind when we're testing these as well. So first of all, the thinner version, this is the one that's going to show the best detail. Well, I have found that it's actually extruded quite nicely. None of the bits and pieces are breaking off of it, but it is pretty delicate. I think if people have less than great soap dough, it's not going to extrude very well. As you can see, it's quite wiggly and it's going to damage quite easily as you pick it up. So now trying with the second disc and as you can see as soon as I start extruding this it is a much more stable shape that's actually coming out and that's great but we will need to just check to make sure that we have got the design that we want in it and it's just not an indistinguishable blob of green soap dough. So version 2 is the one that I want, so I'll just extrude some more of that and then I'm just going to cut it into some short strips because I'm doing my soap in a slab mould so I just want these to be deep enough for a bar of soap plus a little bit extra. 
I want to make sure that I position everything into my soap mould correctly so that I can cut my bars and get some nice even bars. And the easiest way I find to do this is to get a template and because my mould's nice and clear I can then tape the template underneath the mould and then I can see it when I'm actually making my soap. This also works well if you've got a clear silicone liner, you can tend to see a template through those as well. I'm going to be attaching my little doves to my slab mould and I'm going to use some melted cocoa butter um, and that's a good thing to do because it will hold those doves nice and securely so they won't all move around as I pour in the soap and also if I have any excess cocoa butter it'll just get absorbed into the soap. Now because the dove is quite an intricate shape it would be very difficult to make this into a long column mould because unmoulding it would be very tricky because you would end up breaking bits and pieces off. The only way you'd really be able to do it is if you made it in sort of a two part mould that you could open at the top. So instead of that I'm using my slab mould as you can see so I can have smaller bits of the dove and I'm going to do sort of a reverse embed technique. So here I've just got each of my little doves that I've printed out on my 3D printer and I'm just dipping them very lightly, I don't want too much cocoa butter on the bottom there, just dipping them very lightly into some cocoa butter and using that to locate them onto the bottom of the slab mould and that will then seal them there and keep them in place for me. Weirdly, I noticed I seem to have misplaced a dove. I should have had 12 of them. I'm sure I printed 12 of them out all those months ago, um, but now I have 11. So I'm just going to quickly whip upstairs and print another one out so I have all 12 that I need. And there we go. There's our missing dove. <laughs> it's a different colour because I use blue PLA nowadays rather than the red I had back then. So we can just attach that last little dove and then we're ready to carry on. So next I'm going to take my olive branches and I'm also going to attach those to the doves now. I could, I guess, pour in my soap and then poke the olive branches into the soap batter. But what I'm really aware of is I want to make sure that all the way through the soap, the olive branch lines up right against the dove beak. And if I poured the soap in first and then popped the olive branches in, I'd have no guarantee that they were completely lined up. So I'm just making sure as I cut each olive branch that it's nice and flat on the bottom, dipping it gently into some cocoa butter and then just aligning it nicely against the beak of each dove. And then for the main base of my soap, I just want a nice pale blue that I blend myself, which is why I've got a little W, a letter, rather than a number on my swatch here. And this I make up with a one-to-one -one mix of electric blue from You Make It Up and some titanium dioxide. I'm sure you're probably used to me by now, but I always predisperse my micas first of all before mixing them into my soap. Now when I've got a blend like this and I want a mixture of TD and a mica, I just use my titanium dioxide to disperse the other colour. I know the ratios that I want and that saves me using any extra oils or any oils for my batch because I've already got oil in my titanium dioxide. So I just use that to blend everything together. The fragrance oil I'm using today is fresh ginger and green tea from N.I. Candles. Now this is a really lovely fresh fragrance. It's also pretty strong which then means it works really well with our soaps in the UK where we can only use 3% um, as our maximum of our fragrance oil. My mum loved ginger, she always had ginger biscuits and things so this I thought was very appropriate as well.
So nothing complicated with this pour at all. I'm just blending together my oils that I've calculated that I need and my lye solution. And I'm going to bring this to emulsion, add in my colorants and my fragrance oil, and then just pour it around those doves. Now there's nothing complicated about a single colour pour, but hey, you know me, I like to try and give some advice. So whenever you're doing a pour that's maybe, for example, like this, round a shaped embed, whether that's in a loaf mould or a slab mould, or perhaps you're trying to fill in a sculpted layer, try and make sure that when you do the pour that you're not pouring above the item. Because if you pour above something, you can cause air bubbles. Can you see here I'm directing my pour right to the base of my mould and I'm letting the soap push through the mould and fill in all the gaps and then it will flow from the bottom of the mould and push up around the doves. No way have I gone in over the top to try and fill the mould because that could then trap some air in underneath and that's the same with things like embeds and that in a loaf mould. If you can pour and let the soap run along the side of an embed, that's much more effective than pouring on top of the embed. And then once I've got my soap in, I'm just going to give it a jiggle, not too hard because I don't want to dislodge those doves, but I do want to make sure that I've got a nice even layer all across my mould. And once that's done, I'll cover it and leave it overnight and then we'll carry on the next day. So here we are the next day and you can see I've just taken it out of the mould but I've still got my little doves in there and I'm just going to release them from the soap. Now the easiest way to do this would just to be to push them from the top through to the bottom. However, the way that the 3D printer works is it does make a little sort of tiny little ridge around the end of the 3D print that sits on the printer. So therefore I don't want to push mine through because that would be a slightly wider bit that I'm going to drag through my soap. So all I'm doing here is just gently pushing them through from the front to the back just to loosen them and then just pushing them out from the back of the soap. And they do come out pretty easily. And then I'll just put the slab back into my mould. Now my mould comes apart, it doesn't matter whether your mould comes apart or not. You know, if you've got one that's just lined with freezer paper or a silicon liner, you could still do this type of thing. So we've now got to work out how much soap batter we need to fill in all of those little doves. And working out the area of a dove is going to be a complete pain. So the easiest way to do it is work out, or you probably should know already, the amount of soap you would need in your slab. So mine's 15 by 22 centimetres and I want a 3 centimetre deep bar to allow for a little bit of planing. That's 990 I times that by my oil percentage and that tells me to make that completely solid slab I would need 713 grams of oil. I've then weighed the bit of soap that I've already made and worked out my oil percentage in that. And if I take that away I can see that I now need to make up 143 grams of oils and then obviously add the lye and things to that as well. So I've just made up some white soap batter in the amount that I want and added my fragrance oil and I'm just going to pour it into the doves. I have actually in fact here made a little bit extra because I do need some white soap dough so mine is going to be over but I do know exactly how much I would need for my doves.
And just bearing in mind that this is quite a fiddly little shape with some small areas. So just making sure that my batter is nice and fluid so I don't get any air pockets. And once that's done, once again, I'm going to cover it and leave it to saponify and then we'll come back and finish it off. So the next day, again, I unmoulded the soap once more and then I'm just going to mark out where each of the bars are and just chop it on my little sort of homemade slab cutter thing that I've got. That tool I'm cutting with is just a coping saw where I've removed the blade and I've replaced it with a 22 gauge guitar wire. And then once again, I'll just mark out the individual bars and cut those. Now typically if I'm going to plane a bar of soap I would normally leave it for at least a day before I planed it. However I do want to pipe on the top of these soaps so I really want to pipe on the top of them pretty well as soon as I can after they're unmoulded. So we'll just go through and I'll just plane as you can see I've already done one just plane another one on the video. And you will find with this sort of technique that because where you do the top of the pour and it's a little bit rough, you will get quite a bit of soap off. And that's why you need to plan for your bars to be a little bit thicker. Now for my super cute worlds that I received from Karen. And they really are a gorgeous blue. Hmm, I'm going to have to ask Karen about what blue that is. Now because I'm going to add them to the top of the soap and it's an already saponified bar, I'm just going to take the tiniest slice off the bottom so that they have a flat bottom and are going to stick much better than if they had a rounded bottom. If you were adding these on to wet soap, you could just pop them in because they would sink a little bit and they would be absolutely fine. I've made some soap piping. It's just my normal recipe that I've allowed to get a little bit thick. Now this tip is sort of like a curved little leaf tip. It's a number 59 tip that I'm going to be using. So I've actually started off with just a normal little round tip. I think it's a number 3 tip that I've got here. And I'm just going to pipe some stems on the top of the bars. And then once I've done all of those, I'll then swap to that little leaf tip and then pipe in some little leaves. And then once I finish them all, and whilst that piping is still lovely and wet, I'm going to put those worlds on the top. Now I did try with my gloves on, but the floppy little bits in the end were damaging the piping. So just being very careful not to touch the soap. I have taken off my gloves, I know you shouldn't do it, um, and just popped those worlds on and secured them in place. And there's our little soaps all done. Um, can't see a lot at the moment, so let's go and have a look at some pictures of them just to finish off. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you left me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm doing in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!